Beautiful Carney, and I'm an AP Calculus teacher at South River High School in Edgewater, Maryland. And today I want to go over with you that classic free response problem that's something like things are filling up while things are draining out, or there's a pile and we're putting stuff on the pile while somebody else is taking things away from the pile. This has happened on so many calculus tests over the years, the 2015, the 2013, the 2010, I think you're getting the idea. And even if I didn't mention the year, the concept is covered. It's just that maybe the entire free response problem doesn't cover that entire type of problem. I have a slight problem with it though. 2015 talked about drainage pipes. 2013 talked about piles of gravel, unprocessed gravel. And 2010 talked about snow removal. I don't know about you, but when I was in high school, didn't deal a lot with drainage pipes and piles of gravel. 2010, yeah, we've had a lot of snow here in Maryland, but that being said, that was a doozy of a piecewise function. No surprise that that was a tough year in that year. One of the reasons I want to go over this concept is because although it's higher level mathematics and we should be able to apply the concepts no matter what, here's the thing. I'd like to go over a problem that high school students deal with every day, but go along with the same concept of things that are entering while other things that are exiting. The bell schedule. My third period class had 29 students, and my fourth period class had 25 students. And you have five minutes to get from one class to the other. So we're going to use that example, um, but we're going to use the perfect example. Everybody's here today, and everyone's going to be on time. So let's go through this problem. I'm going to give you a chance to read through this exact problem. Let's do some predictions. First of all, tell me what these equations represent. For example, what does E of T represent? And one of my students will say, The rate. And then I'll say, The rate of what? The rate of students. Okay, right, yes, but the rate of the students doing what? The rate of students entering. That's really important. E of T represents the rate of people entering the classroom. It doesn't represent the rate of people in the classroom, just the rate of people entering the classroom. So we use what's called a closed reading strategy, using different colors, going in and circling what do these equations represent. As it says below, there are 29 students in the classroom at the beginning of the period, or really at the end of the period when the bell is about to ring. Now, the bell rings. One strategy I tell my students to think about is make a prediction about the problems before you even get to the questions. Tell me, what are we going to be asked? Well, one thing that we always talk about is probably the antiderivative. It just gave you two rate equations. It's probably going to ask you an amount. We know that the antiderivative of a rate is going to give us an accumulation or an amount if it was people per minute, it's going to be the accumulation of people. If it was gallons per minute entering or being filled into a tank, it's going to be the accumulation or the amount of gallons that were uh, entered in. So it gave me an equation, E of T. And E of T, it said, that represented the students that were entering my classroom. Now think about that. When the bell rings, not a lot of people are coming in at the very beginning. Maybe a few people trickle in within that first minute, but it's not until really minutes two, three, four, where you start, start seeing a bunch of people coming into your classroom. So we know that the antiderivative from zero to five of E of T is gonna tell me how many people entered the classroom in that five minutes from the time the bell rang to the time the bell rang again to signify that fourth period has begun. Similarly, the antiderivative of L of T is going to tell me how many students left. Now, I told you at the beginning, I have 29 students in my third period class, and they're all going to be here. So if I tell you from 0 to 5, the antiderivative of L of T, it should say that in that five-minute time period, 29 students left my classroom. I guess we'll find out in the middle of the problem if it so asks me that. And then another question. We get asked all the time, where are we at a specific time? That requires you to know what you started with and how much you changed. In this case, we're talking about the 29 students I had in my third period class and then how many students entered and how many students left. Here's letter A. This is 
is where I love our little prediction exercise. What are you going to be asked about this problem? One of those things is the antiderivatives of those rates. Remember, if this is asking me how many students entered the classroom and I've been given the rate of how many students entered the classroom, I have all the information I need to solve this problem. We already know the antiderivative from zero to five, when the bell rang to when the bell rang again, signifying class has begun. I get this number, of course, the instructions told me, round to the nearest integer, and so I do, and I got the 25 students entered my class. That was right. I told you at the beginning, 25 students in my fourth period class, and they're all there. So if I'm wondering how many people entered my classroom in that time period, 25 students is what I should get. Letter B asks me, is the amount of students in the classroom increasing or decreasing? I know what the amount of students who entered was. The amount of students who entered is the antiderivative of E of T. So what is the derivative of the amount? Well, the derivative of an integral fundamental theorem of calculus is just that function itself. So if I want the rate of students that are entering, well, that's the function I was given. And I plug in 3, and I get that 5.388 students are entering per minute. OK, well, then we get to the L of T. Remember, L of T represents the number of people that are leaving my classroom, but not just the number, the rate of the number of people that are leaving my classroom. So I go in and I plug in L of 3, and I get that L of 3 is 0 .380 students leaving per minute at time t equals 3. If I had to round to the nearest integer, that's 0. That makes sense to me because most of the students have left the classroom, haven't they? The bell is rung and they've taken off. So we get to this part of the problem. E of 3 is bigger than L of 3. The number of kids entering, the rate of the number of kids that are entering, is bigger than the number of kids that are leaving, the rate of the number. So let's think about that again. The rate at time t equals 3. Three minutes after the bell rang, the rate is bigger than three minutes after the bell ringing and of people leaving. Makes sense in our concept of what's going on. And I make that comparison so we know that the amount of students in your classroom is now increasing. Let's get to letter C. Letter C is usually the hardest for students to do. It asks, what's the minimum? Now, it didn't ask for a local minimum, it asked, What's the minimum number of students that I have in my classroom? Now, students, when I ask this question, they'll say, well, zero, okay? 29 students left, there's nobody in your classroom, and you're waiting for your fourth period class to arrive. But that's not necessarily true. Here's my kind of ridiculous drawing of 29 students, those are the green dots, and the 25 students, those are the red dots. Those nine people, they heard the bell ring, and they made a break for it. And those two people that are circled on the red lane side, that's a person on crutches and their friend coming in the door uh, almost at the same time. And the question is, what's the minimum number of students in my classroom? Was it 20? Did those two people make it in and then those 29 all of a sudden became 31 students? That would be the maximum number of people I had. Did the nine students make it out and then those two students made it in and then those other 20 students on the green side were finishing up a test and then all the red people came in? These are the questions we have to ask ourselves because we don't know. You know there are 29 students in my third period class and 25 students in my fourth period class. And that's all you know. We've all had those moments where kids are finishing up a test while the next class starts coming in. All of a sudden, I have 29 students in my classroom and seven of the next class is here, and now I have 36 people in my classroom. Similarly, I need to check what was the smallest amount. Was it zero? Did my class make it out the door before anybody else came in? Or was there a crossover where there was still some people left over behind from my third period class while people from my fourth period class started trickling in? That's what we need to figure out. And if that sounds like, hey, an important point, maybe one might say a critical point, you're on the right track. Remember, when we ever have to figure out the absolute minimum, we need to figure out what the endpoints are, we need to figure out what the critical point is and what its value is, and then we need to compare. So let's get started on that process. One thing I always ask my students to do is create a verbal model. 
Okay? It asks, what is the amount of students in the classroom? Well, we know we need to go with the starting point. We need to figure out who entered in that time period. We need to know who left in that time period. And we need to figure out those amounts. I'm going to call that equation A of T. And now I'm going to actually look at it. So the starting amount was 29. We know that. I told you. That's how many people are in my third period class. We know the amount of people who entered is E of T, the antiderivative of that. We know the amount of people who left is L of T, and we got that together. Now I'm gonna use the difference property when it comes to integrals, and I'm gonna combine those two right there. So right now, I have 29 students that I started with, and then what was the change? I had people entering, I had people exiting, and how many people did I end up with? The first thing I have to do is evaluate my endpoints. Well, what is a sub zero? Hey guys, a sub zero was given to you in the problem. How many people do I have in my third period class? When it's perfect attendance, I have 29 students, okay? Now I have to figure out the other endpoint, and that other endpoint is after five minutes. I started with 29, and from zero to five minutes, I have the rate of people that enter, the antiderivative of that, minus the rate of people who left. Now, let's be clear here, you already know the answer, because I've told you my fourth period class has 25 students. However, here's the setup. Starting amount, the time of t equals zero to t equals five. Remember, the bell rang, and then the bell rang again. Bell rang to dismiss class, bell rang to let you know class has started. And now this right here, the rate of people entering minus the rate of people exiting. That antiderivative is gonna give you the number of people in the classroom at a given point, and I end up with 25 students. We know this is correct, because I told you, there's 25 students in my fourth period class. Now let's get to the critical point. The critical point is usually the hardest thing for students to conceptualize. That's why I like using the verbal model. The first thing being that 29 students I started with, the antiderivative of entering the classroom minus leaving the classroom. Hey, let's think about this. We need to figure out what the critical point is. How do we find the critical point? We take the derivative. So the derivative of 29 is zero. Then I need to take the derivative of an integral. The derivative of an integral, hey, we know this, the fundamental theorem of calculus. The derivative of this antiderivative is just gonna give me the two functions itself. So I end up with zero plus e of t minus l of t, or simply e of t minus l of t. How do I find a critical point? I set that derivative equal to zero, or undefined, but in this case I'm dealing with two polynomials, so that's not gonna happen. We're gonna set that derivative equal to zero, and we're gonna solve. Setting e of t minus l of t equal to zero is gonna give me e of t equals l of t. And I need to go to that graph, and I need to figure out where they intersect. And it turns out they intersect at 2.3404269. So word of caution here, folks. I found the time. The time doesn't tell me how many people there are. The time just tells me the rate of entering and the rate of exiting or leaving are equal to each other. And we want to figure out how many people are in the classroom at that moment. That means I need to plug in the critical point where I get 29 plus the antiderivative of zero to the critical point of e of t minus l of t, where I get 8.223 when rounded to three decimal places or simply eight students when rounded to the nearest integer. So I had 29 students to start. I had 25 students at the end of those five minutes. So my third period class has 29 students. My fourth period class has 25 students. And somewhere in between, we ended up with eight students. That's the minimum number of students I had. This looks like a day I probably gave an exit ticket right at the end and said, hey, you're not allowed to leave my class until you do this AP review problem that's supposed to take a minute and a half for you to do. If you're watching this video, you're probably taking an applications of integral test or you're studying for the AP exam. If that's the case, then I really highly suggest you do the 2015 free response question number one in the calculator section. We didn't cover letter D in this video, but letters A through C are almost completely exactly the same, and I think you'll see that. Good luck to you. I hope this video was helpful.